Hey guys, it's Bub here. In this video, we're taking a look at Fluentize 10, which is actually Windows 11 22,000, so the original build of Windows 11, that is like a combination of Windows 10 and Windows 11. In some people's eyes, what Windows 11 should have been. Last video, we took a look at Revert SV, which completely transformed Windows 11 back into Windows 10, but that's not what this is. This aims to be a fluent mix of Windows 10 and Windows 11. So I'm very eager to see how they did this, to see what this OS actually looks like. From the screenshots, it actually looks pretty interesting, which is one reason why I want to take a look at it. Another reason is because someone suggested this in the comments of one of my recent videos. And of course, I'm always open to suggestions. So if you have something that you wanted me to take a look at, definitely drop it down in the comments below because I will be sure to take a look at it. I'm always open to any video ideas you may have. This looks like, of course, the typical Windows installer. Again, this VM does not meet the Windows 11 minimum requirements, which is good uh, that they are obviously being bypassed here. Not that hard to bypass Microsoft, so you know you, you still can install Windows 11 on supported hardware as we're doing right now. But here we go. We are now installing. So I will be back once we get into the desktop. Uh, I did read on the, pr on the page that will be linked below that there is no out-of-box experience. It jumps straight into the desktop. So let's see what happens here we go so as expected and like I said from the web page uh, it appears like there is no out-of-box experience it's just gonna jump us straight into the desktop now this is taking quite a lot of time so I'm wondering if it's running like background tweaks background scripts app installs things like that to make this as fluent between Windows 10 and Windows 11 as possible and here we go so okay there's a lot to take a look at here um, First things first, for the sake of the video, let's get VMware Tools installed. That way you can see a little bit better than what we're getting right now. But first impressions, I am... Okay, there's something that just popped up. And Explorer just closed on me. Okay. Oh, it's still running tweaks. So let's try and get this installed before we, you know, do anything else. But first impressions, I'm not actually too impressed. Um, but hey, we haven't gotten that far yet. Uh, we will get this installed and then I will be back. All right, and here we are. So there is most definitely a lot to unpack here. Let's look at the desktop first. So by default, we have this PC recycle bin, a readme file that takes us into WordPad. Um, and you can read over these. I'm not going to read over all of them, but here's some features and some known issues blah 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 blah. Again you can pause and take a look at that if you really want to. Next up is the action center changer that actually does I don't know what. Let's see what it does. It takes quite a long time to open. I'm not sure why and it is just not gonna open. Okay. Run me to fix action center so I assume that's gonna fix all our problems. And then we have a wallpapers app which isn't actually just an app it's just a shortcut into uh, C wallpapers. And as you can see, there are a ton of wallpapers here, including Windows Longhorn and Windows 7 IS images. Very cool. Um, something I did read on the webpage, too. Like I said, there's a lot of Windows Longhorn uh, images you can set as your background. And you can see this is the wallpaper pack that, you, that is included. But of course, our background does appear to be a kind of maps, kind of street signs, well, not street signs, but signs in Australia. You can see Hobart, Sydney, uh, but of course there's some like New York, you know, if you want to go 15,000 kilometers, uh, New Zealand, things like that. On the left, on the right side of our screen, we have a widgets bar with modernized widgets. So obviously widget bar is a Windows Vista, Windows 7 era thing, but these are kind of like the modern UI designed widgets. I actually don't know, what is this? Is it, this is eight gadget pack. Okay, cool. The taskbar, in a way, is like a Windows 10 style taskbar. You can see it's not the typical mica effect or the typical you know width of the taskbar. It is more like Windows 10. Action Center, as well as our clock that, there we go, opened. We have Updates Pending, Network, and Network does open the Action Center for some reason. Volume, okay, we, this is definitely very glitchy. Uh, let's try to get out of Action Center very quickly. Come on, there we go. Uh, vol Ooh, I do like that. The volume brings up your master volume, and then it brings up volume for individual applications. 
We then have, of course, VMware tools and all kinds of, you know, our regular stuff. And that does appear to be, oh, so there's two speakers. Oh, this is ear trumpet. So that, I, I see. On the left side of our taskbar, we have Windows Media Player, Windows Store, Microsoft Edge, File Explorer, Cortana, Task View, Search, and Start. Now this is what really got me, the start menu, because this is like a mix between Windows 10 and Windows 11. As you can see, it has the style of the Windows 11 start menu with the rounded corners and the floating UI, but it has the Windows 10 style layout. I don't know how to feel about this because I really do like the Windows 11 start menu, but I feel like this, this style of start menu could have actually worked if Microsoft really wanted it to. And I am curious to see if there's a way I can put this in the middle because I think this in the middle would actually be really cool and something that Microsoft actually should have really considered. But that's considering if I could open properties, which I obviously cannot. So there are definitely some glitches here that need to be worked out because as you can see, the system is very slow. Uh, but that's what we're gonna take a look at next, our performance usage and the specs of this VM. So this VM has a Core i7-10700K at 3.8 gigahertz. It's a one core virtual processor, as well as I gave it eight gigs of RAM. So CPU, we're peaking at 100% constantly, which is not good. And then memory, uh, we're at 2.5 out of eight gigabytes. So not too bad, but not exactly great. As I said, this is based off of Windows 11 22,000. So this is one of the first builds of Windows 11. Very curious to see what would happen if we actually upgraded to Windows 11, the latest version, 23H2. We just had a mind blank there, couldn't figure out what the latest version was. Um, and would it keep all these tweaks or would these tweaks actually break? I am most definitely curious. If we go to Windows Update, we can see that updates, I believe they're actually working because Windows, yeah, it's actually downloading Windows updates, which is shocking. Uh, I would bet those are definitely going to break some things later down the line. Going into about, we can see this build was actually made on the 22nd of April, 2023. So this is over just about a year and a half old at this point. Um, but again, I didn't even know about this until someone had recommended it to me. So with that being said, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe if you're new around here as I do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. With that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.